Here the reason why that Nigeria government and British and America and Europeans don't want the Biafran people to be free people. Biafran people are people that they see as kind of threat that they will be more greater than China. They see Biafrans in Africa as people that will rise and liberate other Africans. Because in times of technology, they have it. In times of it's a gift given to them. Once they are free people, all these their gift will be awakened. When you go to the U.S. military, the British military, and other in Europeans, you will find the Biafra people are the people who are their best engineers there. So, if they allow these people to exist, the Biafra is going to become a second China, like like China in Asia, like like they will become a second um, China in Africa. And because of this, they don't want these people to exist. And here is the most of the reasons that they don't want Biafra to exist as a free people. They are not going to be making like as they are controlling Nigeria economy, telling Nigeria what to do, how to do, where, who to do business or not. They are not going to do this with Biafrans. And this is the most reason. So I'm going to play this video for you to watch from beginning to end before we come back and continue. The right thing to do is to reject the prescriptions of the IMF and the World Bank. Remove fair subsidy, float your currency and so on and so forth, which have never, have never assisted any country to develop. There is a group of countries, there are countries in the world today insisting that we are not going to be tied to the American dollars. We want to trade among ourselves in our currencies. Those countries are in BRICS, Brazil, India, Russia, China, and South Africa. Others are joining them. Saudi Arabia has joined them, UAE, Ethiopia, Egypt, and others. Nigeria is not there. We cannot be more Catholic than the Pope. If friends of the West are joining BRICS, why are we not there? So that we can trade countries, Nigeria and other countries can trade in their currency. We trade You'll see Bill Gates come and meet your president. You'll see Tony Blair come and meet your president. You'll see Macron come and meet your president. You'll see all of them. And then they will never admit, but they'll be told, if you want money in agriculture, behave this way. If you want money in this area, behave this way. They will never tell that to the Chinese. They will never tell that to the Indians. They will never tell that to the Vietnamese. They will never tell that to the Koreans. But in Africa, they tell us. That is why, as I speak to you now, under this new scramble, the IMF and the World Bank are back. Telling you who to hire in your universities, what to sell and what not to sell. It is a sad situation. So today, as I look at Africa in that new scramble, the Chinese are here. I hope that this institution was not built by the Chinese. The Turks are here. The British are here. The French are here. The Qataris are here. The Americans are here. This time round. They are so subtle that we don't even recognize them, but they control us. What are we going to do about it in order to develop? We must do something. And if we don't do that thing else, you who have been trained in this institution, you have traveled the world. You have traveled Nigeria. There are two things that you can do with your traveling. You can marvel. Says it is great in China. You can marvel. You can wonder or feel pain. I'm urging you to feel pain. To feel pain for the continent of Africa. And in your own way, when you go out there, go and do something about it. Because it has also been demonstrated that it can be done. I've traveled across this continent and I've seen that development is possible. I was in Rwanda before 1994. I was in Rwanda in 1996. Genocide. 
one million dead. It's obituary written. We'll never rise, they said. You go to Rwanda now. They are demonstrating that it can be done. Go to Kigali now. See what they are doing in the health sector in their own small way. See how they are collaborating in the area of mobile telephony in their own small way it can be done. I've been to Botswana and I've seen what they are doing in their own small way. I've been to Mauritius, see what they are doing in their own small way. And they do not have the resources that other countries have. They do not have the resources that the Democratic Republic of, of Congo has. And I'm giving this example to say that indeed it can be done and it can be done within the continent of Africa. So what we must do is to begin to pull together, you know, as I've been sitting and listening, I was also struggling to have internet in this room. And every effort was being made to connect me to internet. And all those efforts failed. Why? Because we are in an era of the internet of things. We are in an era of nanotechnology. It cannot be right that in the Africa's largest economy in Nigeria, I do not have internet at an institution that deals with security. You get the point that I'm trying to make? It cannot be right. And, I'm, and I know why we don't have internet connectivity. It is because we are divided. We have 55 telephone access codes. Nigeria 234, Ghana 233, Kenya 254, Tanzania 255, Uganda 256, Zambia 260, Zimbabwe 263. How can we, in this day and age, you cross into Benin, you cross into Togo, you cross into Guinea-Bissau, you have a different internet connectivity. Why can't Africa have a single satellite and a single telephone call so that when I travel from Mogadishu in Somalia to Dhaka in Senegal, like the Chinese do, like the Americans do, like the Indians do, or you can have the same because communication is critical to development. And I'm saying this, Part of my agenda is to prick your conscience with live examples that you may go out there irritated, but irritated to do the right thing. And I'm suggesting that indeed, when we talk about development, this is what we must do. But is Africa conscious of our state? Yes, Africa is conscious. This is what makes me happy. That after all these analysis, it appears to me that Africans have now recognized that going forward, we can only defeat the conspiracies. We can only have development as we are talking about it by working as a team.